last period occurred during a very evolutionary time in uh, not only in American history but in world history. It was the time of the Industrial Revolution. So you've got firearms that were involved with the history of the Old West that went from everywhere from the flintlock ignition system on through percussion to black powder metallic cartridge on up to the smokeless metallic cartridges. Mike Harvey's collection, it's, it's kind of like looking at the grandfathers or the fathers of the collection uh, that you can purchase through Cimarron Arms. My great, 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 great grandfather was one of the first to come into Texas and he had many thousands of acres up in East Texas near San Augustine. My grandfather had all of his old muzzle-loading rifles and he kept them up in the rafters and when I was a kid, I'd always go to the guest house, get up in the rafters and drag the old guns down and play with them. My first gun was a 61 Winchester pump action 22 rifle, probably the best gun ever made. I became a collector of 61 Winchesters when I grew up. I have a closet full of them. Then in the 70s, uh, the mountain man era got me interested in hawking rifles and I got a blueprint of a hawking rifle from the Hawking Museum in St. Louis and I made me an authentic hawking rifle. It's now a 62 caliber after several bore cleanings and uh, I still hunt with that rifle today. We opened a retail store in 1979 in Houston, Texas called Bigfoot, named after Bigfoot Wallace, which was a, a guy that I admired as a Texas Ranger and, and pretty rugged individual. At Bigfoot, people would bring in, you know, guns and just want to sell them. And uh, uh, I have an employee, Charles Hudson, who worked for me for 35 years now. And Charles used to buy guns from people and they'd say, Mike, you need to keep this one. Mike, you need, you know, this is a good one. Well, it starts with some black powder, uh, 1851 navies, 1860 Colt armies. Uh, then we go to the conversions, uh, Colt conversions, I have Remington conversions. Um, from there we go to the first uh, cartridge gun manufactured by Colt, the 1872 Open Tops. Then the 73 Colt Peacemakers and uh, the Smith & Wesson model number three American made in uh, 1870 or so. And uh, then the Schofield, 1875 Schofield Russians, the Smith & Wesson model number three line and then a new model number three. I guess I have some of all of them. Then in the rifles, I have a, some muzzle-loading rifles, some Kentucky style, some Tennessee style, Hawking rifles, Rocky Mountain style. Then in the uh, cartridge rifles, I guess it pretty much starts with the Sharps. Cartridge, uh, the big Sharp 73 models, 74 models. We do have uh, one that we use to make the Quigley rifle from, which was the same model that, that, that uh, Shiloh made for the movie Quigley Down Under. Then some high walls, 1885 Winchester high walls, trap doors, a little, little bit of everything on the rifle side. I don't have a Henry or a Spencer, but uh, I start with the 66s. A pretty nice engraved 66. It was supposedly used by Buffalo Bill. I've got a letter from Winchester that the guy that had the gun back in 1924 said it was used by Buffalo Bill and he wanted some information from Winchester but he called it a 73. So Winchester said we don't have any information on a 73 rifle by that serial number. It was actually a 66. And then we go to 73 Winchesters, have some of those and and uh, they're just going down the line with the Winchesters. I got the 92s, I got uh, 94s, 86s, uh, the 76, which is a huge 73. Great gun, love the 76. So I have um, model 71s and 
And I have, uh, like I said, uh, half a closet full of Model 61 uh, 22 pumps that were made in the late 30s and 40s. Well, values in a collection of original arms is constantly changing, generally upward. I'd say today that uh, Mike Harvey's collection of his, all of his Sharps and Winchesters and uh, Marlin rifles, Colt revolvers, Smith and Wessons, Remingtons, you name it, all that stuff added together would, would work well into the seven figure range. I would have to say that my most prized item is Texas Jack Omohundros, model number three, American, U.S. marked, first model, and with the inscription on the side of it that says Texas Jack Cottonwood Springs, 1872. <clears throat> In 1872, Texas Jack was a scout in the Army, and his best buddy and partner was Buffalo Bill Cody. They were both in Cottonwood Springs at that time. And uh, recently I acquired his, a cane that Texas Jack presented to a, a fellow named Booth. It's an ivory cane, uh, scrimshawed with a lot of uh, Frontier Icons names on it. And uh, it is the real deal. It is a great piece of history and it goes well with the, with the firearm. I had the opportunity through Guns and Ammo to photograph that gun for an article I did on uh, Western firearms uh, with a former collector, a well-known collector, Greg Martin, who had uh, the gun at the time. And years later, my friend Mike Harvey has it, and <clears throat> it's a historic piece. There is an, another Texas Jack gun that I acquired recently. It's like a 1862 Colt pocket conversion that is nickel plated and it has an inscription on the back strap to May Lily from Texas Jack. There was a kid that claims Texas Jack rescued him when the Indians killed his parents. This kid grew up and put on his own Wild West shows, you know, after Texas Jack was, was gone. And uh, I'm pretty sure that, that this kid was in the same period that May Lily was famous, which was after Texas Jack. So I don't believe this is Texas Jack's Omohundro's gun. Ben McCulloch was a, a state official in, the, in Texas, and when Texas seceded from the Union, and the war started, uh, the, the West Texas area, the frontier, was pretty much left unguarded. All the available men and, uh, and, and any of the supplies they needed uh, went uh, headed eastward to fight uh, in the, the major battles of the Civil War. And uh, Ben McCulloch uh, was a personal friend of Sam Colt, and he told him, he said, we need at, at least 500 1860 model Army Colt 44 revolvers to help protect the frontier and, and arm the Rangers with. And uh, Colt didn't know exactly how to do that since Texas had seceded from the Union, but uh, being the entrepreneur and businessman that Sam Colt always was, he was able to get those guns run through the federal blockade through the Gulf of Mexico. And then uh, once they were landed in, in Texas and they were shipped via wagon to Austin, Texas. However, there were only 250 guns. Only half of the order was fulfilled. And the McCulloch Colt full fluted army revolver in Mike Harvey's collection is documented via a letter from Colt's manufacturing company uh, as one of those 250 guns. 30 years ago, a guy walked in my store with a single action, nickel plated, seven and a half grip, Frontier six shooter, 4440, with ivory grips, and started telling the story that this was once King Fisher's gun in Uvalde, Texas. Well, he was outlaw first, and he was a, a rancher, but a well-known, colorful Old West character who was buried in Uvalde, Texas in his leopard skin chaps that he wore. Uh, Mike has a couple of original Buffalo guns, and uh, 
I had the opportunity to take a few pieces apart on it and look at it. And underneath the barrel of one of his is in pencil, in Victorian script, is somebody's name and the, and the words Montrose, Colorado. The fact that that gun at some point was used in Montrose, Colorado, that makes it a Western gun. And to me, that's, that's excitement. That gun talked. I have a uh, engraved 1873 pistol gripped rifle, 4440, that belonged to Captain James McNeil of the Texas Rangers. There's a famous picture of McNeil with the, the group of Rangers, and uh, he's holding this, this 73 rifle very proudly in the center of the picture. And in his belt is a Will and Fink buoy, and I have the, the rifle and I have the buoy both. I have a gun that I've had for 30 years, and in Keith Cochran's book on military Colts, he calls it the Custer Artillery Model, the serial number 4599 Ainsworth Marked Artillery that was shipped to the 7th Cavalry. So it's just one of those guns. They don't know any history on that particular gun other than it was in the serial number range that went to the 7th Cavalry. Our guns are used, and that's the reason that we have this big collection is that we take these guns to the factory and they break them down and they measure the parts, they computerize the parts, and uh, then they, they make the guns on new modern CNC machines.